We're live. Good morning, and at this time, will all sergeants please start their recordings? PC recording has started. According to the clouds, all set. Backup is rolling. Thank you, and good morning, and welcome to today's remote New York City Council vote on the Committee on Civil and Human Rights. At this time, would all council members and council staff please turn on their video. To minimize disruption, please place electronic devices on vibrate or silent mode. Thank you, Chair Eugene. We are ready to begin. Thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Matthew Eugene, and I'm the chair of the Civil and Human Rights Committee. Thank you for joining our virtual vote today on proposed introduction 1314A, sponsored by uh, the public advocate Williams by request of the mayor in relation to prohibiting discrimination based on one's arrest record and other related matters. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge my colleagues and the committee who have joined us, Council Member Baron, Council Member Drone, Council Member Lender, and Council Member Perkins. Thank you very much, uh, Council Members. Thank you. Fighting secure employment in a competitive marketplace is difficult at the best of time. Let alone during the, the difficult times we have faced and continue to face during the COVID-19 pandemic. Having a criminal record adds an additional barrier, which has a rough of negative consequences. In the United States, more than 70 million people have a criminal record, which is approximately the same number who have a college degree. It is estimated that by age of 23, nearly one in three Americans would have been arrested. In New York State, there were nearly 220,000 arrests in 2019, including both adults and those under 18, according to data from FBI. Given that uh, people of color are disproportionately caught up in the criminal justice system, the bear is a significant burden combating biases against those with criminal histories. In 2015, the New York City Council mounted a significant effort to address this issue by enacting the Fair, Act, Fair Chance Act. Under this law, New York City employers are prohibited from inquiring about a job application criminal history prior to making a conditional offer of employment. While we are proud of the positive impact this law has brought, there remain some gaps and we see an opportunity to improve and strengthen the existing law. Currently, no protection exists for those who are currently employed and face criminal accusation or conviction. Further, those who have a pending adjustment in contemplation of dismissal, non-pending arrest in criminal accusation, and those with useful of offender education are not included under the City Fair Chains Act. If enacted, Intro 1314A would therefore add this additional classification to the list of categories of preclude from criminal history inquiry prior to a conditional offer of employment. Lastly, 1314A aims to minimize the barriers to obtaining a license or permit by prohibiting discrimination for minor violations and other non-criminal offenses. We hope that in implementing these changes, the council can continue to strengthen the protection offered by a Fair Chance Act. I'd like to thank committee staff, Val Kimiri, senior counsel to the committee, William Duby, policy analyst, and Nevin Singh, finance analyst. I would also like to thank my staff, Melissa Wilson, and all council staff who make uh, this uh, hearing possible. Now I would like to turn it over to my colleague. Uh, is uh, the public? Oh, okay. 
I see him, he's here. Now I would like to turn it uh, over to uh, Public Advocate Germany William, who will uh, make a statement. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Chair. I appreciate it. Can everyone hear me? Awesome. Thank you. I do. Thank you very much. Uh, as I mentioned, my name is uh, Jamani Williams. I'm the public advocate for the city of New York. I want to thank uh, Chair Eugene uh, and all the members of the Committee on Civil and Human Rights for uh, giving me some time to speak today. Five years ago, New York City made history by passing uh, the landmark Fair Chance Act. I introduced the Fair Chance Act to ensure employers could not discriminate against a person over a prior conviction. I also want to thank Manhattan Bar President Gail Brewer for her work with me on the Fair Chance Act. Since its enactment, the legislation has decreased employment discrimination and created new opportunities for those who have criminal records. The New York City Commission on Human Rights settled seven cases in 2020 so far, yielding nearly $120,000 in civil penalties. While this landmark legislation has benefited our city's labor force by ensuring that job seekers are evaluated on the basis of their qualifications and experience rather than cr their criminal records, we need to expand the law's protections. The city's anti-discrimination law currently protects people with convictions, but not those with pending <laughs> This may incentivize some to plead guilty, which should have never, which uh, should never be encouraged. The limited protections in the law enables employers to conduct background checks prior to an offer of employment and reject applicants if charges from an arrest are still pending. Intro 1314A, known as the Fair Chance Act 2.0, would prohibit this violation from taking place. The bill also expands a list of protections for employees convicted of a crime after employment, as well as forbids employers from denying employment due to unseal violations. The only violation in the state's penal law that is ineligible for sealing is the anti loitering provision known as the walking while trans law. We know this law is deeply discriminatory and largely used to target and harass trans women of more color and immigrants and needs to ultimately be repealed by the state. The Fair Chance Act 2.0 ensures that employers cannot deny employment to an individual because of unsealed violations, which supports the walking while trans ban by making certain that a transgender individual who is profiled, surveilled, harassed, and subsequently arrested because of their gender identity will not be hindered from getting a job in the long term. The central tenet of our criminal justice system is innocent until proven gifty, guilty, uh, so many say. Unfortunately, employees wrongfully assume guilt when an employee or applicant is arrested. However, just 19%, 19% of 178,122 New York City arrests resolved in 2019 resulted in a criminal conviction, according to the New York State Division of Criminal Justice Services. Like the Fair Chance Act, this bill does not require employees to hire any particular applicant. Rather, an employer makes a fair and careful evaluation without the consideration of prior criminal records, prior arrests or unsealed violations of applicants before extending an offer. Notably, employment discrimination targets people of more color as they are disproportionately subjected to arrests and presumptions of guilt. The ongoing economic crisis only exacerbates this discrimination. This is what makes the Fair Chance Act 2.0 such an essential piece of legislation. Everyone deserves a fair chance in the job market, especially now when employment stability has been severely impacted by the COVID pandemic. Uh, we do know that many of the detractors' concerns of the sky falling uh, did not happen, and all we did was help people have the ability to be employed. Uh, in addition, uh, there still are protections that uh, make sure that if someone is applying for a job and the crime they committed is closely linked to it, uh, it there are protections for that that remain. A job can mean the difference between a stable future or scrambling to survive. It is up to us to do the right thing. I thank you so much. I encourage uh, the committee members to please uh, vote to uh, send this uh, bill for a full vote approval later today. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Public Advocate uh, Williams. Now we now proceed with the vote. Mr. Clark, would you please call the vote? Sure, good morning. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on civil and human rights. Introduction 1314A, Chair Eugene. All right. Barron. I vote aye. Drum. Permission to explain my vote. Mr. Chair. Yeah, yes, uh, Michelle. Okay, thank you very much. 
I want to thank you for your leadership on this and uh, for uh, moving this through the committee. I also want to thank um, our public advocate, Jamani Williams. Uh, many of you already know that when I was 16 years old, I was arrested on a prostitution charge, uh, something that the um, government and the police would do to gay men, particularly older gay men my age, uh, in order to harass and to uh, destroy our lives, essentially. It's something that I had to deal with throughout my, my entire life. I, um, uh, when I went, applied for a job at the Department of Education, of course, that arrest came up. Fortunately, I was able to go in and explain it to them. And as I said, I was only 16 years old when this happened. Um, but of course, throughout my career, even when I was running for city council, it was brought up continuously um, and, um, and has been used as a weapon against LGBTQ folks for many, 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 many years. So, um, you know, uh, my friend Robert Pinta was arrested in 2009, as recent as 2009. There is concrete evidence that the NYPD was still using these type of tactics to harass and um, arrest LGBTQ folks. So I'm very grateful that we're going to see this pass and I'm grateful to see that it can no longer be used as an impediment to employment. Uh, as someone who has suffered through this for uh, his entire life, uh, I'm very grateful to, uh, to everyone involved. Thank you very much. Councilmember Drum? Oh, I vote aye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Lander. Well, uh, well, first, Danny, I really want to thank you for those remarks and just like humanizing this for us. You know, I think people have some things in their heads, you know, and like to imagine that there was a time that people had in their heads that you would not be someone we would want serving our city in the way you are and teaching our kids and representing us. Like it really just shines a spotlight on like how, uh, like the kinds of discrimination that people can become comfortable with and think are normal all you need is to look in that slightly different light and think, what are we doing? So I wanna thank you for your leadership and your courage over all that time. Um, Mr. Public Advocate, thank you for leading us on the Fair Chance Act originally and on this bill today. Um, I proudly vote aye. Thank you. Council Member Perkins. I vote aye. By a vote of five in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, the item has been adopted by the committee. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you to all of you, Public Advocate Germany. Thank you very much. And also, Councilmember John, thank you for your very touching uh, you know, uh, uh, statement. Thank you so much. I think you are, you are served. You have been served um, by the, before by other legislation, but today I know that you are very, very happy and very proud. And uh, to all of you, my colleagues, and uh, all the staff of the city council, thank you very much. And the hearing is adjourned.